I'm going to take a little detour here uh, to look at the little book of Ruth. This is interesting. It's not in the main storyline. It's sort of a parenthesis or um, a side story. Uh, but it, uh, it adds a, an interesting and important piece to the storyline that will come back into play later in the New Testament. The story centers around Naomi, who is a widow, and her two daughters-in-law, who are also widows. Uh, Naomi's husband dies, and her two sons, who are both married, also die. And so the three women, the mother and the two daughters-in-law, are left alone. Now, this is not a good state of affairs. In ancient times, if you were widowed, you might not survive it. Uh, there was no safety net, and uh, women who didn't have men to support them were in um, a very precarious position. Uh, Naomi says to the two girls, Orpah and Ruth, um, if you want to go home to your families, um, that's fine. You go ahead. I won't hold you. I have nothing to offer you. I'm old. I'm not going to have any more children. If I did, by the time they grew up, you'd be too old. Um, if you want to go home and return to your father, uh, your brothers, and, and have some kind of a life there, you go ahead. You don't owe me anything. Uh, Orpah does. She leaves. But Ruth is loyal to Naomi, and this is a great thing because Naomi is old as well as being widowed, and she needs somebody to take care of her. And so Ruth has great loyalty to her mother-in-law, and this is the origin of that famous line that's often used in the wedding ceremonies where Ruth says to Naomi, Whither thou goest, I will go. Thy people shall be my people, thy God shall be my God. Now this is especially significant because Ruth is not a Jew. She is a Gentile. Uh, her husband really shouldn't have married her because that was against the covenant for a Jew to marry outside the faith, but he did, and she adopts the God of Israel as her own God out of loyalty uh, to her mother-in-law. Uh, so Ruth and Naomi travel uh, around trying to you know, hold body and soul together, which probably means some begging and, you know, some going out into the vineyards and finding some grapes that the harvesters missed and, and so on. Um, they, uh, they come to the, uh, the fields, the, the farm of a man named Boaz, who happens to be a, a relative of Naomi's. And uh, they get permission to glean in Boaz's field, which means after his harvesters have picked everything, uh, they, they get permission to go in there and uh, pick up whatever the harvesters have missed. And this is kind of a welfare program, sort of. It's a way for people to have some food. And the harvesters, in fact, are instructed by God in the Old Testament, in the Pentateuch, to uh, not harvest everything, to leave the corners of the field and the edges of the field unharvested so that the poor can go into the field and glean and uh, find enough to live on. So Ruth does this, and then following Naomi's instructions, she kind of cozies up to Boaz, and Boaz takes a liking to her and ultimately marries her. And uh, this is the reason why the book of Ruth is in the Bible, because it tells the story of the genealogy of Jesus. Boaz uh, and Ruth have a son named Obed. Obed gives birth to a boy named Jesse, Jesse gives birth to a son named David, who eventually becomes King David, the father of Solomon, and so on down through the bloodline until eventually born of the descendancy of David is Jesus of Nazareth, um, the Jesus who is the Messiah, many generations later, hundreds of years later. But uh, this little piece reminds us of the genealogy of Jesus and how it is that uh, a Gentile was a part of that genealogical record. This is kind of interesting because it prefigures the idea that the Gentiles will also be included in the salvation story that God is working out through Jesus Christ. It won't be only for the Jews. He will be a light to the Gentiles, a light to the nations. Like the prophecies say, arise, shine, for thy light has come. And uh, um, the angels say, Behold, I bring you good news, which will be for all people. Uh, and this is how it came to be. So that's the interesting little story of Ruth.